the distance, you can see that work has started. So we're going to go over there and see exactly what's happening. As you can see, Jim Herbstrip has him here going. Going to be here for a couple more months. Extending it to the north. And then a little bit down the southern part from this area. Finding a few features. been very dry out here and you can see that they're I have to wet it down a little bit to keep it workable see the features be able to get to them and work with them properly and then of course covering it with the tarps and today with a special guest Dr. Barry Kent has come over to see what's happening, confer with the students. detail of course is placing the sandbags at the strategic locations. Uh, why don't you just, since you're almost there, why don't you just finish filling the strip and then it's 10 minutes before you start on start cleaning up. So just Knock that out real quick. All right. Clean it over. This is the Palisade line which ran around the fort village. And you can see how the different features are located within the wall. And down here you can see the rocks and fill that they have to go through to get down to the layer where the artifacts, features of the site still remain. The bulldozing and the exposing of the site continues. As <laughs> reporting a uh, late woodland period ray gun. Yes, well again, I think that's a very significant find in that they haven't been recorded on any of the other uh, sites around Yeah, this here. is really going to uh, turn around our conceptions of okay. what's going on here in the lower Susquehanna in proto-historic times. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, what is that now? Uh, I think we've, we finally found a date for the site, an absolute date. Okay. This is a eight track, I believe. Yes, I haven't again seen one of those in many, many years. All this uh, very significant finds we're making in what appears to be a uh, midden area coming out of this uh, bulldozing experience. And this, I understand, is the original Palisade line, right? The original Palisade line. Coming together nicely. Yes. An archaeologist's second best friend besides the trowel, the spoon. Looks like they've reached the uh, eastern limits of about as far as they can go into this fill. Opening this up to see what's there. Good, coming up with anything new or exciting? 
this up. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. It's a nice flake. Yes, it is. It's big and white. <laughs> Pretty. Hey, at least it's a fine. <laughs> hey, it's showing that there's life hanging around here. That's right. all I want to know. I just like knowing that there's signs of life. Coming out right there. Uh huh. At least it looks like there's some artifacts in there. A few. out the heavy fraction, which are the buoyant particles of wood and other plant fibers and things from the heavy samples. It's essentially a separation sample. Yeah, the light, usually botanical stuff, floats through the top. Right. And so the they would often intentionally snap those and then boil the marrow, them out, boil the marrow out, mm -hmm. dig the marrow out. Part of a, the right side of a deer jaw there broken. And again, they're all broken because even in the jawbone there, there's marrow. So they would break the bones up essentially and throw them into a stew pot. That is the boundary. That's right. They're scraping away. Okay. You can see the very edge of the pit there. Okay. Yeah, what's the So what do we have here? Uh, it looks like uh, possibly a pumpkin seed or half or split seed from some other plant that was found in the feature of excavating over there. It's carbonized. Very nice. Yeah. Well, it's the last day of Temple's work out here. August the 8th, Friday. And everybody looks like they're making the most. They're trying to find as much, expose as many features, record, collect as much as they can. They're even doing some Fancy screening up on the hill. So let's see how they end up their last day of work here. Screening the feature dirt. Yep. Anything exciting?
Funky Friday's coming up. Any relation there, Tom? I don't think so. 